ಹಾಯ್ ಹಲೋ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಮಲ್ಲಿನಾಥ್ ಹಿರೇಮಟ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಮೈ ಚಾನಲ್ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಯಮ್ ಎಚ್ ಓಕೆ ಫಾರ್ ಈಸಿ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಟುಡೇ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇಕ್ವಟೋರಿಯಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಬೈಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ and the dipole movement and at the end we will derive a small derivation which is very important for your board exams which they have asked repeatedly in your annual exams right so that is we have to calculate the electric field on the x y line and the next coming videos i will uh, do with the equatorial line and the general point okay so let's start with the today's discussion electric dipole see here uh, the word dipole di to poles means here we are considering electric dipole so means which are having the two poles when there are two poles one both the poles are equal and opposite so here we are taking the two charges one is minus q and another one is plus q these two are equal and opposite charges separated by a very small distance which is denoted by 2a so even i can take this as in a center of the dipole even i can write it as a and this as a in some books they are using l in some books they are using r so just you have to remember what do you mean by the electric dipole the two equal and opposite charges separated by very small distance is called as electric dipole a system consisting of two equal and opposite charges separated by very small distance is called as electric dipole so here in this electric dipole now we will define some important definition that is the first one is axial line which is also called as the axis of the dipole even we can name it as axis of dipole so you can ask sir we are, where we will come across all these electric dipoles so simple in day to day life so many places where we can get the electric dipoles like in a hcl water n2o2 so there are several examples we can give for the electric dipole which already you have studied regarding the dipoles in the chemistry right uh, the direction there we are it is different and in physics the direction will be different okay so let's see one by one so the first one is the axial line what do you mean by the axial line a line passing through the axis of the dipole is called as axial line or i can say a line passing through the negative and the positive charge of the dipole is called as axial line or the axis of the dipole very simple very easy have you understood okay let's start the next one equatorial line equatorial line it is also called as a normal bisector the another term for this is normal bisector so this is very simple because already the word is there normal bisector normal means it should be perpendicular right so the two words we can give one is equatorial line or we can mention it as normal bisector okay so how we'll make the definition for this equatorial line a line perpendicular to the axis of the dipole and passing through the midpoint of the dipole is called as equatorial line very simple a line perpendicular to the axis of the dipole and passing through the midpoint of the dipole is called as equatorial line here you can see this is it clear so two simple definitions and the next one is dipole moment what do you mean by this dipole moment the dipole moment is denoted with the letter p and now it is defined as it is the product of magnitude of the either charge and the separation between them the product of magnitude magnitude is how much both side it is q only the magnitude of either charge and the separation between them separation between these two is how much here it is 2a therefore p is equal to q into 
two a and in this since it is in a vector quantity i can denote this with the p cap sorry p vector therefore it's a which quantity vector quantity so when we have mentioned this as in a vector quantity then here i have to denote the direction so what is the direction of the dipole moment remember this please from the negative to positive charge what is the direction of the dipole moment it is from negative to positive charge what is the direction of the dipole moment it is negative to positive charge okay so this is the direction and what will be the si unit the si unit is since here it is charge therefore coulomb here it is a separation therefore meter very simple it is a si unit is coulomb meter that's it so this is all about the dipole moment <coughs> which quantity we have mentioned we have mentioned it as a vector quantity so we have given given the direction of the dipole moment so please remember the net charge of the dipole <coughs> net charge of the dipole is zero why it is zero because the magnitudes are equal and they are opposite of sign therefore <coughs> minus and plus it will be how much zero and the electric field electric field cannot be zero due to electric dipole what it means the if i want to calculate the electric field at the midpoint the field cannot be zero <coughs> why because one is a negative charge another one is a positive charge the reason of force of attraction therefore the field will be stronger between the two charges and you can see the direction you due to the, if i want to calculate the electric field at the midpoint due to this negative charge <coughs> this will be the direction due to the positive charge this will be the direction both the directions are what same so already i have discussed about the directions and the angles in my last video that is in the electric field where i have calculated the electric field due to an isolated point charge and even i have given the different formulas related with this you can get the link in link in my description box just i have given so even if you click on that you will get the idea of this so this is all about the electric dipole okay so let's calculate the electric field at a point on the exile line due to what it is dipole okay, okay let's start with a small derivation as i told a determination of electric field at a point on the axis of a dipole so let us consider a dipole so here i will consider a charge plus q and here i will take an another charge minus q so this will be the dipole this is the midpoint of the dipole so now you can take this distance as a and this will be the a in some books they used to take it as an l right so even you can mention it as an 2l or even you can mention it as an 2a okay so now i want to calculate the electric field so where i want to calculate the electric field so let us take here electric field at point p this is the point p where this point p is this point p is at a distance of r from where from the center of the dipole so now for this it's a very simple derivation right so here i have considered an a dipole so let 2a is the distance between the two charges right and now i want to calculate the electric field at point p where i have taken the point p i have taken the point p at a distance of r from where from the center of the dipole from the center of the dipole here i have mentioned okay so now at this point you want to calculate the electric field due to the plus q 
and you want to calculate the electric field at point P due to what it is minus Q. So now let's calculate one by one electric field. Electric field at point P at point P due to which charge? Due to charge plus Q. This charge. So here what is the distance you can observe? The total distance is from the center, it is how much from the center it is R. Now I have to subtract this A because I want to take the electric field at point P due to which charge plus Q. Only I have to consider this distance. So therefore E1 vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into what it is Q divided by it is R minus of A whole square. Why it is R minus A whole square? Because I have to subtract this distance from the R. Why? Because I want to take the electric field at point P due to this charge. And now see this one is the negative and this one is positive. Therefore let me write down the direction of the dipole moment. This is your P vector. What is the direction of the electric field? Always sorry. What is the direction of the dipole moment? It is always from negative to positive charge. So this is the direction of the dipole moment. So here E1 vector e is equal to this. I will take it as a P cap. What is a P cap? A P cap is the unit vector of the dipole moment. So now I have calculated the electric field at point P. Now this is the direction of the E1 vector. Or simply I can write it as an E1. You can write it as E1, no problem. Now, this is your E1 vector is ready. Similarly, you will calculate the electric field. Electric field at point P. At point P due to charge. Which charge here I will take? Let me take the charge as in a minus Q. So by using this charge. So here the distance was R. Now I have to add this A. Okay. Therefore E2 vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. It is Q divided by it is R plus of A whole square into what it is minus P cap. Now you can ask the question why it is minus P cap. Here the electric field at point P due to the charge minus Q will be towards the negative charge. As we know we want to calculate the electric field at a point P due to the positive charge it is always away and due to the negative charge it is always towards. About this regarding the electric field and its direction already I have explained in my last video that is in electric field. So I will give the link in the description box. You can check and even you can see the different angles at how we have to calculate the resultant electric field due to the two charges, right? So you can check that one. So here it is E1 vector and here it is E2 vector. Okay. So now the uh, derivation is almost it is at the end because we have calculated E1 vector and the E2 vector. Now the two methods, by using the two methods we can calculate, one is by the vector addition or even I can take the angle as theta is equal to 180 degree, there automatically I will take the negative sign. So both the options are there. So here I will use, by using the vector methods I will do this. So the resultant electric field. the resultant electric field at P is given by it is E vector e is equal to what I can write down E1 vector plus of E2 vector it is a vector addition it is very simple and now here it is E vector e is equal to E1 vector and E2 vector I have to add now 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught in the both the side 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common. If you want you can write down one step 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. It is Q divided by 
R minus of A whole square. Here it is with the negative sign. Here also it is P cap. So let me take the P cap as a common. So just I will write down here. This is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q divided by R plus of A whole square into what it is P cap. What the negative sign I have did just I have multiplied with this. So it is with the negative sign. Simple. And now in this which are the common it is E vector is equal to here it is charge is common 4 pi epsilon naught is common and now in the bracket we are getting 1 divided by R minus A whole square minus of 1 divided by R plus of A whole square into P cap. Now you can cross multiply and you can take the LCM. So here it is E vector is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Here if I cross multiply now this will be R square plus of A square plus 2AR this part R plus A I have cross multiplied right and R minus A R minus A is nothing but what with the negative sign I have to take and here it is R square minus A square plus 2AR why because R minus A whole square when you cross multiply it is R square plus A square minus 2AR if you multiply with the negative sign then it becomes minus R square minus A square plus 2AR and in the denominator it is R minus A whole square into R plus A whole square if you multiply these two what you will get it is A minus B whole square this one is A plus B whole square this is A square minus B square and above we have to put the square therefore it is R square minus A square it is whole square and with this I have to put the P cap in this R square A square R square A square will get cancelled and finally we are getting this E vector is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught what this 2AR 2AR how much we are getting this as 4AR divided by R square minus A square whole square almost we are at the end of the derivation this is into P cap so now this Q into 2A the here it is 4AR in that I will take 2A Q into 2A is nothing but what it's a dipole moment that already we know okay therefore E vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught it is 2RP divided by it is R square minus A square whole square into what it is P cap. This is the formula to calculate the electric field at a point on the axis of the dipole. Very easy, very simple. Okay. So still if we assume R is much, much, much greater than A. What it means? R is much 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 greater than A means what? The point P which I have taken on the exile line if it is much greater than the distance between this A that is R is much much greater than this A then we can neglect the term A here. Please remember whenever we are neglecting the terms always we have to neglect in addition or subtraction okay I think you know all these things then also just it's my duty to explain okay uh, so here this R is much much greater than A because this is a dipole dipole as we are told the two equal and opposite charges separated by a very small distance right so therefore R is much much greater than A therefore I have neglected we can neglect a square therefore 
it is e vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this is here you have neglected a square just I'll write down another step no problem 2 rp divided by r raised to 4 here we are getting because a you have neglected r square whole square it will be how much here it is r raised to 4 therefore e vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught it is 1 r 1 r will get cancelled what we are getting 2 p divided by r cube this is a very small and very important derivation for your board exams right so just revise once we have taken an electric dipole we have taken a point p and then we have calculated the electric field at point p due to the positive charge then due to the negative charge we got the two equations and then I have done the vector addition, I have substituted E1 and E2. In that I have taken the common Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. And now here 1 by R minus A whole square minus 1 by R plus A whole square. Here I have cross multiplied and I have taken the LCM. Now what we got R square plus A square plus 2AR with the negative signs it is. Therefore, in that side r minus a whole square it was, it was r square plus a square minus 2ar. If you multiply with the negative sign, we will get r minus r square minus a square plus 2ar. These two will get cancelled and we will get it as 4ar. Q into 2a, we know it as a dipole moment as a p. Okay. So, now I have substituted and at the end, if we have taken an assumption, if r is much 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 greater than the a then we can neglect the a square therefore e vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 rp divided by r is to 4 e vector is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p divided by r cube this is a very small and easy derivation okay so this is all about the today's class if you like the video if you are understood please share my class videos okay so this is all about the today's class see you in the next class videos where i will discuss once again the electric field at a point on the equatorial line and we will discuss on the general point okay that's it of today's class bye bye see you